Sarah Knight is the Head of Learning and Teaching Transformation in the Higher Education Directorate at GISC. She has a substantive experience working with people to implement technology so, so to increase student experience and satisfaction. She's worked within further education, higher education and national programs in implementing technology to create curriculum change. Sarah has just under 20 years of experience at GISC and today we'll be talking about rethinking assessment and feedback in the digital age. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Marcus, and delighted to be with you today to share some of our work that we've been doing at GISC. Right, so yes, as uh, Marcus said, I'm delighted to be with you today to share some of the work we've been doing at GISC. And GISC has been working in this space uh, for many years, going back to 2011, when we started a three-year programme around exploring technology enhanced assessment and feedback. Um, over those years, uh, subsequently, we've developed a range of different resources relating to assessment and feedback and importantly, the role that technology plays within that. Um, you'll see on that slide an assessment life cycle that we've worked with Manchester Metropolitan University on, and that has been very well used in terms of a useful resource to think about the ways in which assessment is embedded within the life cycle of a student's journey. Um, we've done work around electronic management of assessment and we've also looked at the way in which um, student learning progression and employability with ePortfolios has been supported and implemented throughout the sector. So those are just a, a potted history really of JISC's work in that space. But some of you may be more familiar with some of JISC's more recent work on the future of assessment. Um, and we published a report uh, in February 2020, which was obviously quite a significant date before the pandemic struck, where we were talking about the future of assessment and the vision for assessment and feedback, for assessments to be authentic, accessible, appropriately automated, continuous and secure. Following on, and of course, uh, those two years that followed, uh, we did produce some reports around how the universities were pivoting their assessment to support students during the pandemic. And our assessment rebooted report, as well as rethinking assessment, were published subsequently and still hold a great deal of practice and case studies around how universities were able to support students digitally with their assessment and feedback practice. So as we're now emerging from the pandemic, we thought it was uh, a useful point to reflect on what's changed. How is the assessment landscape in 2022 different? Um, what are the current challenges that universities are facing? Um, we have some principles of assessment that we produced in our earlier work. Do those need updating? Is the life cycle model still valid? And can we identify examples of good practice and innovation? So that was a point to ask staff within colleges and universities. What are the challenges that you face in relation to assessment and feedback? And you'll see there from that word cloud that uh, there's some common themes coming through there. Um, words around workload, time, consistency, cheating, uh, authenticity, integrity, authentic. Uh, and those were some of the challenges that I think uh, may you may reflect on within the practice um, that, that you're undertaking. So what have we learned? What have we learned from the sector in terms of how we can overcome some of those challenges? Well, we produced a report um, entitled our survey of the assessment landscape in higher education, which we published earlier this year. And this builds on a survey we carried out back in 2014 where we surveyed higher education institutions to find out uh, what their current challenges were then. So we thought it would be timely to revisit that survey, to look at what's changed, and to ask about the use of digital tools that support assessment and feedback practice and the challenges that universities are now facing. So we received uh, 63 responses from 46 unique higher education institutions and had some very interesting headlines around what's changed uh, since our last survey. And I think some of these headlines perhaps are, are, no, are not a surprise. Um, in the pandemic and of course in the way that we're now working where digital is very much part of, of what we do, 
online submissions um, was, was certainly something that now all most universities have included within their assessment practice. We also see that as online marking has had a great increase in widespread usage of online marking, almost double what it was when we um, asked the survey seven years ago. And increasingly, we're seeing the use of digital tools to support feedback, with 91% of our respondents reporting widespread use. So this survey also asked our sector what were the challenges they were facing and going back to that word cloud that I shared earlier, we can see that some of these words are sort of echoed on that word cloud. Um, but if we're talking about our uh, pedagogical challenges, it was really interesting to hear that accessibility and inclusivity was actually um, the highest identified, uh, had the highest identified responses from our, our participants. Um, in 2014, just over 6% of respondents identified accessibility and inclusivity as a significant issue, whereas in 2021 that had risen to 51%. And it's assumed here that the difference is relates to the legal compliance that we now have and also raised awareness of these issues. Our new GIST principles for assessment and feedback emphasise the importance of accessibility and inclusivity in the design of assessment and feedback practice. The second challenge that was um, identified from staff was about rethinking their assessment design. And here we know that there's a greater emphasis that universities are now playing on placing on redesigning the curriculum and this is an opportunity to explore the role technology plays in supporting effective assessment and feedback as part of that. Academic integrity is always raised as an issue and we know that that gets a lot of coverage in the media and it's an area that we need to be rethinking our strategies around academic integrity, how we support students better, not just thinking about um, in, in the negatives, but also encourage them to think about the skills they need to develop when they move out into the workplace and the integrity, the ethical skills that they need to operate in the workplace environment. Our cultural challenges, um, you know, perhaps uh, that first one, um, I think we are seeing less of now because I think staff are recognising the challenges that the pandemic brought and how digital can play a very positive part of that. And the um, enthusiasm that staff have now around rethinking their practice and looking at ways in which we can enhance what we already do well and the role that technology plays within that. Um, students not engaging with feedback is, is an interesting one. And I think, again, it's looking at ways in which we can, uh, for students, really ensure that they have a better understanding around the importance of feedback and looking at different ways we can really engage them around that. Our technical challenges, um, perhaps a surprise that we're still, think, still um, identifying that interoperability is the main technological challenge. Um, and we know that uh, there's a lot of work that's been done with vendors, um, with IMS in relation to that. So that's an area that we hope um, we can move forward on. So if we look at these challenges and how we can take those forward, um, we revisited a principled led approach to assessment and feedback through this work. And that's always been important in terms of looking at the ways in which we can define um, our principles for what is good assessment and feedback. Um, it's a way to engage staff in thinking about their practice, but it's also a way that we can synthesise out a body of evidence around what good looks like for assessment and feedback, but with some actionable next steps on how staff can apply that to their own practice. Um, so the work we were doing in this study really was um, an opportunity to revisit our existing principles, look at what's changed and also really ensure that some of the uh, learning that we've gathered through the pandemic can inform and develop a new set of principles on what good looks like for assessment and feedback. We know that there are new issues that are coming to the fore. We mentioned accessibility and inclusivity as one key one, um, but we also know that there is growing concern around how assessment impacts mental health and well-being, and also ensuring that assessment tasks are more authentic 
And that is a priority in many disciplines, as we are now seeing. So we revisited our assessment model and this diagram really shows the way that our thinking has changed and evolved. The diagram sums up our current thinking on what all the facets of good assessment uh, need, still need to happen. We're just thinking differently about the relationship between them. Uh, assessment of learning describes the institutional quality assurance processes that lead to students acquiring some form of verified credential. If we're moving out from that in the circle, we're looking at assessment for learning. And assessment for learning is the overall learning design, ensuring that we are assessing the right things at the right time with plenty of formative opportunities to feed forward. And this is the cog in the wheel that makes everything else revolve. And then our outer wheel, this uh, outer circle there, is assessment as learning, as a learning experience, where the formative and summative elements work well together. Tasks appear relevant, students can see what they have gained by undertaking the activity, and they feel involved in dialogue around the standards and evidence, and the continuous development approach helps with issues of stress and workload for both staff and students. So that informed our principles for good learning, teaching and assessment, which I'm sharing here on the screen. And these seven principles are useful to have in your mind when you're considering your own practice and looking at the ways in which you can achieve these. So this is a help of helpful starting point in reviewing the, you, the ways in which you are using technology, the way in which you are engaging students in the assessment and feedback that you're designing, and looking at the ways that this can then support their wider learning. These seven principles uh, were based on consultation that we did widely with the higher education uh, sector and uh, had some international uh, input as well. So we hope these will be valuable as a, as a way of informing your practice as you take forward the developments in relation to your assessment and feedback. And moving on from those, we're also able to uh, think about the ways in which we can apply those. Um, and there's a, a good practice document there that uh, you're welcome to have a look at. Um, it's, it's the table of those assessment principles and ways in which you can then think on how to apply those to your own practice. Um, there are comments um, that you can add in there and reflections in that table. But it's a, it's a useful document to have as a discussion point with others and also to engage your students in discussion around those principles as well. And we've summarised that further in our principles of good assessment and feedback guide. So you're able to access that guide from the URL on that screen. And for each of those seven principles, we go into more detail around the context, looking at the ways in which technology can support the principle, but importantly, bring those principles to life with examples of case studies from the higher education sector, both in the UK and also internationally. And those case studies provide some really valuable insights into how others are developing and shaping their assessment practice. We are also developing a series of podcasts, and I hope that you will have a listen to our Beyond the Technology podcasts on rethinking assessment, which are available from our GISC website through that URL. So that again brings together experts from across the sector who are rethinking their assessment practice and are looking at innovative ways in which they are integrating technology into their assessment and feedback. So more examples of, of inspiration to enhance and inform the practice that you are undertaking. So I hope that that has given you uh, a taster of some of the work we've been doing at JISC and uh, we'll be able to, you'll be able to explore those links in further detail and look at the ways in which you can enhance uh, your current practice. So thank you and I'll hand back to you, Marcus. Thank you, Sarah, that was fantastic. A really deep dive in a short amount of time into how we can develop assessment. I've had a look at the Proforma from the QR code, something I'll definitely be using to expand my understanding, but also working with the academics uh, at UCL. So something that uh, you, you explained in great detail and I now have abundant resources to further understand is, is assessment. 
and the seven points there, which are a fantastic place to start. Uh, but I want to focus on feedback because you mentioned it, that that students uh, sometimes don't engage with with feedback. So I want to propose a, a question to you. If an academic comes to me and says, Marcus, the students aren't engaging with my feedback. I can see that they're not learning from the things I'm writing and it's a lot. It takes a lot of time and I feel like it's not worth it. You know, what can I do as an academic to make sure that my students are engaging with the feedback? I think that that's that's a really important question, Marcus, and I think it's something that we get asked often. And I think it's it goes back to that model of of assessment as learning and very much seeing that that feedback is actually part of the learning process. Um, it's it's often we we talk about assessment literacy of students, and I think that's an important term because it is getting that greater understanding from students that assessment is not just passing an exam, it's not just getting a grade, it's part of that wider process of learning. And some of those sort of ways in which we've been sort of seeing um, some good examples around feedback relates to when um, you're working on sort of group feedback activities to engage peers in reviewing each other's work, looking at um, giving feedback, so encouraging students to think about if they are peer reviewing anonymous, another piece, another piece of students work for them to actually think about the ways that they would be delivering and designing that feedback so that they have more of an understanding that the feedback actually forms part of that learning for that student. So it's trying to play a more active role in the process, trying to get students to be able to articulate how they are using feedback as part of their learning. Um, we know in the past that audio feedback um, has been used, video feedback, and also I'd like to sort of point you to the work that Professor David Nicholl is doing at the University of Glasgow and the Adam Smith Business School, where he's uh, working with staff and students to use students' inner feedback. Um, as part of a way of students understanding the importance and the role that feedback plays, um, looking at the ways in which they can then um, test their understanding um, against other resources, against other work, and looking at how they can then reflect on where they're learning uh, or how, they, how their understanding is changing. So I think the key points for me are it's students understanding the importance of it, students being more active in the process, students being able to experience the process of giving feedback themselves. And I think also exploring the ways in which then technology can be more um, of an effective tool to enable more timely feedback, um, which we know um, from our previous work around assessment of feedback, uh, you know, students, need that feedback at the point they need it, um, you know, not sort of three weeks later when they've handed something and forgotten about it and it, it loses its meaning. So it's really looking at the ways in which digital can play a role within that. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I think facilitating discussion on how to give appropriate feedback is a is a great thing to do. And if you can do it in the beginning of the student's journey, then by the end of their time at university, their ability to give timely, uh, effective feedback will, will, will be fantastic for everyone involved in that learning environment. So true. And so thank you, Sarah. That was great. And we'll have to get you back at some point to talk about the cog of assessment, because I think that's another lecture in and of itself. Um, but thank you so much, Sarah. That was absolutely lovely. And I've learned a lot about assessment and feedback in the digital age. Thank you, Marcus. It's been a great pleasure chatting with you today.